Hi everyone. So this is going to be a series of videos that I'm going to put all together, uh, I hope, if it all works, for my new lockdown project, which is going to be a planted bioactive terrarium. So I've mentioned in previous videos I've got a big terrarium in my garage, which is the uh, Highland terrarium because it doesn't get very warm. I've got a smaller uh, warm terrarium in my home office with various orchids and begonia and various other things in it. This is going to be much the same sort of stuff, um, but fully planted, not in pots. It's also going to be bioactive, which is something I'm starting to look at more and more. So it's going to have a culture of isopods in it, um, which are wood lice if you're in the UK. Only I'm going to use probably a, a tropical variant, which I'll talk about in a later video. So this is this is the uh, empty container. So this is um, an old cheap fish tank that I had for another project. Uh, no filter, no uh, heater, nothing like that. I've just given it a rinse, a wash, got rid of some of the old sand from it. And uh, I'm going to start planting this up. Anyone interested? Look at that. One of my African violets on my kitchen windowsill doing very nicely. And interestingly, my, my moss terrarium in a kiln a jar, which I might talk about in another video as well. Right. Now, if you imagine that I'm going to do a fancy working effect, and we'll have the next video when I've got some media in there. Right, so this is the... Imagine there's been a montage of me doing some work. This is the first layer of media. So we've got hydroton balls, uh, which is usually um, for hydroponics. You can get them from a hydroponic shop. If you don't mind dodgy Dave and his mates who are growing weed, or you can order them online. Uh, you can probably even get them from legit garden centres now. So that acts as a drainage layer. You can also use like egg crate, which is like uh, mesh plastic or uh, gravel, pebbles um, will do the same job. And then on top, uh, this is just dried, what well, was dried sphagnum that I've wetted and pressed down. So all this does essentially is just stops the, uh, the rest of the media, the growing media that I'm going to put in from falling down in between the Hydroton balls, uh, you can use mesh, um, but I find the moss gives a slightly more organic effect. It also helps with wicking. So obviously the drainage layer will, will eventually probably hold water. Um, and if the sphagnum moss stays relatively moist, it wicks the water up from the gaps at the bottom back into the, the growing mix. Um, so it can get too wet, but also it'll stay, stay very moist and hopefully less chance of drying out. You saw the, the bark piece, um, this is cork bark, designed for, for growing, I'm going to use it as a mount for orchids, um, probably a tillandsia, an air plant, and possibly a couple of other things, depending on what I've got growing in my pots upstairs. Um, yeah, I need to figure out how I'm going to mount that. I also want some rocks. I think the plan will be, have that sort of there with some orchids and stuff on it. And then in the corner, I want um, something built up with a, uh, a cephalotus, a carnivorous plant on it, closer to the light, growing down. That's the plan at the moment. Um, I need to find some rocks. Uh, the media is already mixed. So the next video, we'll put it all together. So I forgot to do the video for the, um, actually putting the media in, but this is, this is the first pass. So you see the, wicking layer that I showed earlier and this is a mix of uh, cocoa uh, cocoa soil uh, made of you know coconuts from the coconut industry washed and sold for terrariums mixed with small orchid bark and a little bit of sphagnum moss to hold some moisture and the basic planting is obviously this is the first pass so you've got the cork which is going to have um, an orchid on it and a tillandsia on it, I think, depending on what comes in the post. I've got one of my African violets, one of my small minis. That's a tiny uh, cephalotus. I debated putting a big one in, putting a big one in, but I didn't want to risk it. Um, so that's a small one, which wasn't doing very well anyway, so I can take a chance on it. Uh, Cryptanthius, I think, something like that, Bromeliad. Uh, Begonia listada, and I've got uh, Unicata, Selaginella and um, Serpens there and there. I've got another begonia coming that's going to go there, I think. And then I've got fern, 
to go down here. Oh, and down here I've got um, an offshoot of my dual orchid, which is immediately gone where I don't want it, and some Java moss. Um, so I'm going to gradually plant this up a little bit more. Hopefully some of this stuff will grow in, uh, and then I need my light to arrive from China. Fingers crossed. All right. So this is this is kind of close, I think, to the finished article. So you should be able to see um, it's all relatively well planted up now. It's had a week and a half, two weeks growth, I think, uh, for most of the stuff since the last section of the video. So I'm just going to go through, and also I've had my uh, light come from China. So I'm going to go through what's in here, and I'm going to talk a little bit about the light, because I do think they're excellent for the money. And I've used them in the past. In fact, I'm using it for my warm terrarium right now. So the uh, Cephalotus is still there. The Bromeliad is still there. Um, this is these are mostly begonia. So begonia. This was the new begonia. So it's a Rex hybrid. This is new growth since I got it. Down the front here is my Listada. Um, which I'm hoping will grow in. If it doesn't, it's coming out. The Selaginella, obviously, I love this stuff. I might do a video just on this. So that's the Serpens, Unciata. So this is a uh, offshoot from one of my orchids that was in the Highland Terrarium, but I think it can cope with mixed conditions. So I'm going to see how it does. It doesn't look brilliantly happy, but it's been in there a few weeks and hasn't died. Uh, that's a Cataleya that wasn't doing very well in the other terrarium, so it's now mounted on bark as well, small Cataleya. Um, you might see this is a Pingicula. So I had a bunch of Pingicula Esuriniania uh, just lying around that weren't in my Pingicula trays. Yet another video I need to do. Um, I've seen some species of Pingicula growing um, as epiphytes. So I thought, ah, what the hell, I'll chance it. Um, so obviously this is the uh, Tillandsia, the air plant. Uh, the fern, I might have to put names of these in the description because I can't quite remember them. The AV, obviously, um, more Silaginella, the jewel orchid, um, and I think that's it for the plants at the moment. But it's looking pretty good. It's looking pretty good. So as I say, it's fully planted. Most of it's been planted for a couple of weeks. Uh, the mini Cataleo is relatively new because um, I've taken it out of my other terrarium where it was also mounted but not doing very well. Uh, yeah, so maybe optimism over experience on that. The uh, Pingicula, as I say, that's a new addition because I'm chancing it. So this is the uh, zoom out a little bit. This is the light from China. So this is a Chihiros uh, light. They they were designed for, I believe, for the planted aquarium hobby. So they do grow. Uh, they're quite good for plants, and I've used one for quite a long time in my my other warm terrarium, the the non sort of planted one. Uh, you can, they come with a UK plug if you order it, they come with a um, controller so you can turn the light down, this is on its second from lowest setting and this is probably where it will stay and I'm, yeah, the mount isn't ideal, <laughs> I'm using paper clips to mount it but you get the idea, so it mounts nicely, I'll zoom out, and yeah, with the, uh, the aquarium lid on, that hopefully is going to sit, um, as a, as a statement piece in my living room. It was originally intended to be bioactive and I did put springtails in there, um, although I've not seen any for a while. I've got a whole bunch of isopods um, that may go in. I'm kind of worried that they'll eat the live plants and not the leaf litter that I've put in for effect. Um, yeah, so that's, that's my first sort of real go, I mean I've done a couple small ones, but this is my first real go at a planted terrarium as opposed to just a terrarium with, with pots in it. Uh, Sherpa Designs on YouTube does amazing work on these, uh, far better than I can, uh, far more talented and artistic. But yeah, so Begonia Lestada, Begonia Rex, Begonia... I'll put it in the description, I can't remember. Uh, a couple of orchids, nice Tillandsia. Hopefully I'll get some light and some colour. Uh, nice fern. I really do like those. And that has seen some serious new growth. That's new growth at the back there. So that seems to be doing well. I'm hoping I don't give it too much light now. And Cellaginella also doing really well because it does love the humidity. 
honestly. Yeah. So we'll come back and perhaps I'll do a catch-up video on this in six months and we'll see how it's doing.